Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something very cool, which is creating Unity splines at runtime, procedurally, which is just a fancy way of saying we're going to write some code. You can see in the little insert here some white semicircular disks, that's where we're going to generate the knots for our splines. And you can see the enemies moving each along their own spline into a kill zone, and then they're in front of the player, and then they move beyond. And we're going to implement some programming patterns today while we do it. Okay, that's enough of an introduction. Hit that like button and let's get on with the project. All right, I'm gonna start by creating an empty game object here. I'm just gonna call it enemy spawner. And underneath the enemy spawner, I'm just gonna add some visuals that I'll remove later. I'm gonna use Freya Holmer's shapes library. I'm gonna add four disks. And each one is going to be in the shape of an annulus, which is a little squished donut. Or think of it as a circle with a hole in the middle. So all I'm going to do with the disk object here, and this part's totally optional because this is a paid asset. But what I'm going to do here is just create an arc that goes from 0 to 180 and make it a little bit bigger. This is going to represent where we're going to find points within these ranges. So I'm going to make four of them and we're going to make the path follow points that land between these. And just to make it a little bit representative of what it's going to be, I'm just going to change their size and position a little bit. Quick tip if you want to spread these over a linear range in any of these fields here, you can type L and in parentheses the start range and the end of the range. So between 0 and 50, it'll spread all those objects out evenly. Now I'm going to modify them a little bit more to be representative of what the code is actually going to set them to be, uh, just to, for a starter visual. But we're going to adjust these programmatically in a moment. Without further ado, let's write a little bit of code here. We need to define the properties of an annulus. And we're going to also start writing code for the enemy spawner that's going to make use of these things. So the annulus is just going to be data. It's not going to be a mono behavior. Let's move it into its own class. Let's move the enemy spawner into its own class now too. You can bring up that context menu just with control period. And that'll give you the option to do that quickly. It's faster than trying to create classes in Unity. First, let's make it system serializable so we can see it in the editor. The first property we need is going to be distance. How far away from the spawner will this particular annulus be? Then we need to define the inner radius and outer radius. And basically, an annulus really only has one job, and that's to generate a point within that particular area. So first of all, let's get an angle. Instead of writing 180 in here, though, I'm going to use pi. And that way, if you wanted to change this so that enemies come from all around the circle, you could just change it to 2 pi. I'm just going to put a note about that. But like, if you imagine a rail shooter through space or some, some game maybe like Star Wars Squadrons, you'd want the enemies to come from everywhere. So you could just easily change it here. We're going to get a random radius that's somewhere between the inner radius and the outer radius. We're just going to choose a point within that little area. And then we'll create a vector 3 out of it and return it. And if we just look at it again in the scene view quickly, I'm sure you can start to imagine where these points are going to land. Okay, let's head over to the enemy spawner. I'm going to be using the shapes library. I'll put a link to this in the description in case anyone wants it. It's very useful for this kind of thing and many other uses. So we want to have an array to hold all of these shapes. And you could have more than four if you want. And then I need an array to hold all my disks. We're going to make an enemy prefab, which we're going to, of course, be spawning with our enemy spawner. And how frequently do we want to spawn them? And let's make a parent that'll be the parent for all the enemies and a parent for all of the flight paths or splines that we're going to be creating at runtime. So let's put a note in here because I'm going to remove this before I put it into the repository. But in the start method, basically, I want to set the data for each of these disks in the scene with the information from each annulus. So let's just iterate over them. Let's set the position to be the position of the enemy spawner, but add in the distance field from the annulus to the Z. That'll move it forward or backward from where we're spawning. Now, this is starting to look like an extremely long line of code, and it's unnecessary. Uh, and some of you who have been watching the channel for a while know that 
There's an extension method that we've made to handle this kind of thing, and I'm just going to pop it open here. This will be in the repository too. It's vector three extensions. We have two of them already. One is width, which will set an X, Y, and or Z value to whatever you pass in. And the other one is add, which will add a value to the existing vector three. For this case, we're going to be keeping our enemy spawner at zero, zero, zero. So either of these methods will work for us. So let's go back over here and rewrite this to a more concise version, which is simply to say that the transform position is going to be the same position as the spawner, but we're going to change the Z value to that of the annulus distance. Okay, and then let's define the radius of our disk. And let's set the thickness, which is just the difference between the outer radius and the inner radius. So our code will compile. Let's make an empty enemy mono behavior right now. And just move it over to its own class and come back. So the main purpose of this class is to spawn enemies. So in the update method, every time we've reached the spawn interval, well, let's spawn an enemy. So all we're going to do is keep a timer here, which I've already defined as a float. Whenever that timer is greater than our spawn interval, let's reset the timer, spawn an enemy, and during the update method, we'll just advance it by time dot delta time. Now, in the spawn enemy, what I want to make use of is the factory programming pattern. And to do that, we're going to make one factory that's just going to create splines, and we're going to create another factory that just creates enemies. So we'll get a flight path out of our flight path factory, and we're going to send that into our enemy factory that's going to generate our enemies. Yeah. So for now, I'm going to comment them out because I want to make sure that the rest of our code is working before we go into that part. Let's go back into the editor and we need to add our new enemy spawner script onto the enemy spawner and then we can start setting some values. First of all, I'm going to drag these four disks in here and we can hide that away. Now, I already know a few values I want to use because I was testing before I started recording. So I'll just fill them in quick here. And for both the enemies and the flight paths, for now, I'm going to keep them right under the spawner. Now you could put them under other objects. You might not want them to follow the spine. You might have all kinds of other ideas. The last thing that I'm going to do is I've renamed the camera controller to be rail follower because I want the spawner to follow the rail too. Both, both scripts are identical. So we're going to put that on there as well. It just needs the same properties we had before. And quickly, I'm going to change one more thing in here. I'm going to change inner radius to outer radius because I think it looks better. So let's start playing and then we'll have a look at it in the scene view. So if I come out a little bit, you can see the starting disc is a fair ways behind the player. And what I want is for them to come up from behind, but not right on top of the player, then kind of come into a kill zone range and then fly out. Now, we'll probably have to adjust these a little bit, but this is the basic idea of what I want. For now, I think we can hide them and turn them back on if we need to adjust anything. I'm also going to hide our other little indicators here by turning them, either disabling them or turning off the mesh renderers. Again, we can turn on these little debug tools whenever we want. Let's get into handling collisions here. So obviously we're going to be wanting to shoot enemies by the end of this video. So we need a layer for our player, enemy and projectiles. Let's come into project settings under physics and let's set up our matrix. So Basically, all I really care about at this point is that projectiles can hit enemies and probably nothing else. So let's just clean that up so there's only one collision going to happen. Uh, just right now, I'm just going to quickly save the project and I'll save our scene too. So let's change our player and all of its children. Let's change the layer on our projectile prefab. And we might as well make our enemy right now. This won't take long. We'll just call it enemy. Uh, we can grab something from the Ultimate Spaceships creator if you guys have that. If you just, you can also just use the free model if you want, or just make a, 
make a cube or something. Anyway, I'm going to use this one here. And what I'm going to do is we want it to be able to collide. So it needs a collider. Of course, it needs a rigid body in order to make collisions happen. At least one of the objects has to have a rigid body. And yeah, let's get a box collider on there. I'm not going to use anything more complicated than this. Let's just make it a square that'll cover it. And let's reset this back down to zero and just yank the whole thing up, make sure it looks proper. Yes, that's that's fine, I think. Of course, we need to add our enemy script, which is doing nothing yet. And one more thing, we're going to need a spline animate. Now, we could add this through code, but let's put a default one on here. I want to move it by time. I want it to take about 30 seconds to travel the whole entire path, and we're not going to loop. Let's we'll set that to loop mode to once. And we're going to leave the spline container empty because that's what we're going to create with our factory. Let's turn that enemy into a prefab. Let's not forget to zero out the values. Let's make sure it's on a layer. One more thing I just about forgot. Let's make sure there's a trigger collider on our projectile. And let's make sure that our enemy collider is also set to trigger. OK, let's start writing some code for the enemy. First, let's get a reference to our spline animate component. And let's also have a serialized field for a prefab we can spawn that'll some kind of explosion when the, when the enemy is destroyed. So on update method, as long as there is a spline animate component and the elapsed time on the component is not greater than its duration, which remember we set to 30 seconds, we will destroy that game object. But we also want to destroy it if it collides with a projectile. So on trigger enter, let's assume one hit kill for now. So we'll instantiate our explosion and we will destroy our game object and in five seconds we'll destroy the explosion too. Let's start working on our two factories and let's start with the first one here that will actually build the splines which is probably the more interesting of the two. So we're going to call it flight path factory but what it's really generating is a spline container. The spline container is going to contain a spline which is composed of several knots and knots are just junctions between different points. So in our flight path factory, which is going to be a static class, we'll have a static method to generate these flight paths and return the spline container. Let's make a new vector three that will hold all of our path points. We'll make it the same size as the annulus array that we pass in. We'll iterate over top of that. And for each of the annulus, let's get the random point and put it into our array. And then let's make a separate method called create flight path that will take those points. And basically what that's going to do is create the new game object to hold these. We're going to add the spline container component to it use the add spline method to create the spline and get a reference to that and then let's make a new knots array this can be an array of bezier knots and then for each of the path points let's create a new knot and the knot needs a position and it needs a tangent in and the tangent out and when you think about those think about those as the as the handles that come off of the knots that you can adjust i'm just going to make them super simple right now they're just going to be one forward one backwards by a small amount. Let's just say it's 30. Okay, we just need to set the knots into the knots property and return our container. Now we can work on our enemy factory. Now at the moment our factory isn't super complex, but as you can see here, Copilot's trying to come up with something that is kind of right, but not really. Let's write a builder. So we'll get a new enemy builder with the prefab, with the flight path, with a flight path parent, and then we'll call build. And in the build method, we're going to call the enemy parent. And that is because I want there always to be an enemy parent. Um, so nobody can ever forget that. The build method will always require one parameter. So just below here, let's write our builder. 
we need to store all these prime properties and maybe some other defaults. For now, I'll just put one default in here. That'll be the loop mode once. And then we just need our methods. Now, Copilot's going to fill all these in basically for me. So all these builder methods for setting all the properties that we want. And once we get down here to the builder, this one I'm going to write by myself. Um, so we want to pass in the transform for the enemy parent. Let's get rid of all this suggestion here. We do want to instantiate it, but now if we've actually added a flight path spline, we're going to grab our spline animate component. We're going to set its container to be our flight path, which of course is a spline container. Let's set its loop property to loop mode and let's default the elapsed time to zero. Now, if we've set a flight path parent, let's make sure that we actually assign our flight path as long as it's not null two to have that parent and let's reset the transform of it. And that's it really. Let's just clean this up a little bit and we can move enemy builder into its own class. There's just one more thing I want to handle and that is we should destroy each of these flight paths if the enemy is destroyed. So let's keep a reference to it on the enemy class and let's make a public getter and setter for that so we can set it in our builder. And that way, with the onDestroy method in the enemy, we'll destroy that at the same time. And guess what? That is all the code we need. So let's jump back into the inspector here. We've got a few more things to configure, such as dragging our enemy prefab in here. So let's do that. Let's see what else. I need to grab an explosion. So I'll drag one prefab into there from the effects that I've already downloaded from earlier. Let's have a look at how it plays. So I'm not going to blow up any enemies yet. I just want to see how they're pathing in, if anything needs to be adjusted. So we have a few enemies there now. Let's just pause the game and come and zoom in on the player here and have a look at what's happened. So we have three splines that have been generated so far. They're all reaching out into the distance there. And let's have a look here at the beginning. So this looks okay. Two of them are fairly similar, but one is quite different. Uh, yeah, they're all unique, definitely. What we can do is actually turn on all of our disks again and have a look at how that's uh, shaping up with our generated paths. So I'll just turn them all on again here and then maybe that'll be a little more clear. So we can see that all the points here have been generated in the general area of our disk and then they're passing through a few others and then heading out in the distance towards our final destination. So that looks all right actually. All right, let's do a quick little playthrough here, make sure that all the ships will blow up properly. <laughs> let's see how my aim is, too. I was a little slow on the draw there. Let's see if I can get this one. Yeah, all right, that looks okay. So we might have to adjust a few things, like how fast the projectiles are moving, whether or not they should be moving on the rail or not. That might make a big difference. Um, how fast the enemies are going along. Uh, this, this seems okay though. With a little bit of testing we can make a few tweaks, but uh, yeah. Next week's video is going to continue with the theme of working with Unity Splines. So make sure that you hit the bell button if you want to be notified about that. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. And of course click the like button if you haven't yet. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the comments below.